This first full week of 2021 ends with a lot of soul searching for the country after a very dark day. This week's attack on the Capitol by supporters of President Donald Trump still hard to believe. Four or five people died now. Dozens arrested. Secretary of Transportation Elaine Chao and Education Secretary Betsy DeVos resigned from the president's cabinet, blaming the president for in part inciting the riot. Some right wing groups tried to blame Antifa for being behind the invasion. That conspiracy theory debunked by tracing images posted on social media to members of QAnon and the white supremacist group, the Proud Boys among others, both overt supporters of the president. Now President Trump says he will not go to the inauguration of Joe Biden. We will have an extended conversation about the impact on American democracy and the Republican Party a little later in the program. Uh, we also can't ignore the ongoing economic impact of the pandemic. Airlines have seen a drastic drop in business. As you know, passenger loads off more than 50 percent nationally during the pandemic, more than $80 billion in lost revenue for the airline industry. And that leads to a direct effect on airports. Count the Quad City International Airport among them. Some relief from the federal government. Big plans, though, to expand airport services, add new airlines, add new destinations, all forced to be put on hold until the public health crisis subsides. Well, you've seen the economic toll the pandemic has taken on local governments, restaurants, and everything related to travel. Airlines have been decimated, as we know. Airports, they're struggling too, and the Quad City International Airport's challenges actually precede the pandemic. We'll talk about that this morning with Ben Leishner, the executive director of the Quad City International Airport. Welcome back to the program, Ben. Thanks for having me, Jim. You got it. Uh, let's get to some of the statistics. Air traffic data from an industry consulting firm indicates airlines overall in 2020 provided 49% fewer flights than they did the year before that. The TSA reports a 61% drop in passengers nationally going through checkpoints. How consistent is that with that, with what you saw at the airport? And what kind of a drop did you have in flights and passengers locally? Good question. We were actually very similar numbers at Quad Sierra National Airport. I am happy to say we were we trended slightly better than the national average when it comes to domestic flights. Um, and we did see from March 2020 on, we did see uh, a steady increase and in improvement in restoring service um, all the way through the new year, which we posted some some great numbers around the nation and also in the Quad Cities. And we certainly can figure out how that hits airlines directly when they don't see the passenger volume. How much does that hit at the airport financially? Well, it, obvious, obviously, the airlines pay a big portion of, of the operating costs of the airport. Um, we, even though planned on probably about a 50% reduction through the through our fiscal year, we are seeing about a 35% hit in our revenues. And that's because the, the last two years, we spent a lot of time diversifying revenue streams with commercial development and other services other than just the airlines. So. As far as getting hit by a major storm, we, we were in a really strong position as an airport um, based on the diverse revenue that we are able to pull in. Can you put a dollar figure on that? Well, a dollar figure, it varies every year based on how much capital improvement we do. But our operating budget to keep the lights on and to keep the doors open and the facility clean and maintained, we run about 12 to $13 million a year. And that includes a staff of uh, under 100 employees that are on site 24-7 um, serving, serving the traveling public. So the losses though, when you talk about 35%, would that be a, a $3 million loss essentially? Yeah, it, it's, the loss is, is roughly between three and $4 million. It has been somewhat volatile. We were very fortunate with, uh, some, with the CARES initiative and CARES package that came through to have some support that was uh, appropriated by Congress. Uh, we got just over $8 million through CARES that was really designed to offset some of those lost revenues. And the one thing we have maintained is a commitment to our workforce. Uh, the big thing we wanna make sure is when the airlines um, do wanna bring back full service and people are ready and, and feel safe to travel, we wanna make sure that the airport and the travel experience is ready to welcome them back. You talked about that $8 million that the airport got. That's from that latest $2 billion in relief because the airports haven't been included in the past. Does that offset the losses enough? What else can you do with that money? Well, luckily, all the, all the money that's been enacted so far, and that doesn't include the most recently enacted funds of the $2 billion, we've yet to get insight on what that actual number will, will, will mean to the airport, hopefully uh, somewhere in several million dollar range. But that money is enacted to cover any legal uh, expense for the airport. So we've elected to, to primarily use it for debt service and for payroll to make sure that our employees get paid and we're able to provide the services and benefits to our workforce that are required during such a significant impact. 
We'll step away from our conversation for a moment more with the airport's executive director on the way. Taxing resources, why airport management isn't focused as heavily on being able to tax people in Iowa, for the record.